view. This is a nice park land. So this has all been revegetated, although it's probably originally here. So where am I? I'm in uh, Woodlands Historic Park next to Talamarini Airport. And here is the Buller Granodiro. Okay, so if you want to look at the actual geology but you can't see any, what you do is you just go to these ants' nests. So these ants, yeah, they look a bit dangerous. They actually dig the rock out of the ground, what's left, and they disperse it on top of the ground. So, yeah, just be careful. They'll come out when you disturb the nest. Down Galsua. So what we have here, looks like we just have quartz and feldspars. Maybe some amphibole. I don't see any mickers. And you throw it back on their nest and they get very angry. So this is coarse grain material. So I go over the other side and yeah, they're heading over here so I don't know I'm here. So then we just go over to another nest. Which is quite small. Uh, but someone's dug it up it's probably uh, could be an echidna actually so yeah, these look like vicious ants anyway they're pretty big aren't they so here we have some materials these the soil has uh has clay in it so that's probably the Mika's amphiboles and the feldspars breaking apart and probably organics as well but yeah it looks like just quartz really Ooh. yeah don't mess with these ants I really don't like it anyway If you want to look at any of the rock, you need to go up that way. Ooh, look at all these kangaroos jumping past. gone just like that very angry ants once again it just looks like mainly just quartz and feldspar open up your toad oh, jelly brand hill that sounds like a type of dessert So what is that? Is that the, the femur? You reckon? Oh, a small bone of a kangaroo. Oh, yum yum yum. Mmm, delicious. Okay, so that looks like yellow box or yellow gum or something like that. Dead tree being burnt. And we have some weeds. That looks like aniseed or something like that whatever but here we have granodiorite outcrop so what we need to look for is any fresh material but there's some over there very interesting so it has the rounded weathering that you associate with uh, these intrusive igneous rocks and should be coarse grained so it should feel like sandpaper. Beautiful. Young eucalyptus tree. And 
This black stuff here is actually toxic to plants, uh, not to plants, to animals. Okay, that looks a bit weathered. But it looks also fresher than this stuff. So you can see that this is actually pretty coarse grained. Highly weathered material. Someone's broken this off. So the actual... Okay, so zoom in. So what we have here, we have the white, which is a probably sodium, calcium, feldspars. The grey, which is the quartz. Then we have, what's a biotite makers? So this is classed as a biotite. I type granite, which is igneous. And we have, have a black, which is probably amphibole. So pretty simple. If it was a granite, it would actually be a lot darker. I'm not, I'm not a lot darker, a lot lighter. So a lot more quartz and feldspars. And as this actually cooled, it would have formed these fractures in the actual rock, which we see. And we have a sheet fracturing that's normal for granodiorites. And there's some more over there. So this actually formed about 380 million years ago as okay so this was originally was Ordovician Silurian sedimentary rock which is probably all around us and it was been what they called lengthened because it's been stretched from this no that's the north ah, lengthened from the south so the south is that way so there was an actual continent being accreted uh, down south but because it was pushing up this was actually sliding around it so it's actually been stretched and it thinned the lithosphere and allowed the actual magma to rise up and this is one of the intrusions now whether it erupted as a volcano I don't know because there is no rhyolites or any other material associated with an extrusion. Uh, we do it the basalts, but it's more recent. So, if there was any rhyolites or other material like that, then it's been eroded away. Because basically, this probably would have been about 20 to 30 kilometers underground. So I've had about 20 to 30 kilometers of uh, erosion. And as it's been eroded, because this was big mountain change called, I think it's a Bamamarian uh, orogeny. So as this has been eroded, it's also been uplifted. So, and it's probably also doing that as we speak. So as this rock has been eroded, uh, you uplift it. So isostatic equilibrium. Because when you have a mountain change, just say that's, that's the actual crust, when you have a mountain change, you have pretty much the material being pushed into the lithosphere and also pushed up. And as it's been eroded, so just say you have erosion like that, this moves up to uh, be equal with what is exposed. And it just keeps on doing that to it's all eroded. Uh, and then you have a craton so that is what is happening here but this process is where well, you can't see it in one day especially you can't see it in the 10 seconds that we're actually looking at you uh, need to have tens to hundreds of millions of years to actually observe the process so in the next 10 million years this is probably this hill will probably all disappear Okay, we're going to have a look at this exposure, which is the same granodiorite. Oh, she oak. So, she oak, this is very interesting. This is not a leaf, this is a stem. The leaves are actually here in between. They're very small. And they have a 
all these little cones with seeds in them native plant i think they also occur in papua new guinea and probably some places like i know they go up to hong kong they have a species so they do go into the northern hemisphere so as you can see this granodora is quite eroded but you can see that the what's left is the feldspars and yeah, it seems like Got large feldspar crystals, so it's probably plagia clays. It's hard to find any original works about this material. Now, why is it weathering like this, though? That is very interesting. The actual weathering process. It's unlike the weathering process over there. So maybe this is highly fractured material. But I don't see any any fractures. I do see there is a fracture here. So maybe this is a fracture, but it's been in filled with clay or something like that. And hmm. That might be a xenolith. You know, a piece of the original uh, mantle down below, or even just country rock that's broken off and in place. Looks like there might be another xenolith. So I have read about xenoliths in this rock, but. Ooh, dragonfly. Interesting. So there you go. And this side is actually quite smooth. So, once again, we can see large crystals of feldspar. Obviously, this probably cooled while well, it's still in the magma chamber. I was brought up so many days because uh, the quartz is actually quite small. So, obviously, uh, yeah, another. So, what I mean. Oh, another dragonfly. So what I mean is that this feldspar actually cooled at lower depths. So this rock probably was at a lower temperature when it solidified like this. The crystals are actually quite small. Okay, so here I am at another outcrop. So maybe those ones that I just saw before have been uh, drilled. From the far distance, looks like it. So this one is pretty much just rounded, and what they look like normally. So a bit hard to actually tell what uh, the actual uh, material is. And it's highly weathered. You can see the actual soil profile that starts here it has a lot of organic material in it so far and most of that is organic feels a bit sandy so the minerals are still breaking down I'll say that most of that that you can feel is the quartz the amphiboles, micas and 
then the feldspars would actually be broken down fairly quick. So we'll just go and check this last one. Okay, so there's a, a wattle. Don't know what species it is. And then we've got some other native plants. So the only things really are not native around here are probably the grasses. All the trees in it are. And there's lots of rabbits. They love eating this grass, and so do the kangaroos. So this is called Patterson's Curse, the actual purple flowery stuff. It's a weed, so you now have to get rid of it. And oh no, I thought it might have been a shotgun shell. So obviously this is round as well. Has a onion exfoliation, which is, you know, pretty standard with granites, granite diorites. Here's a large rock. Ta da! So the actual soil here is probably not that thin. So you can see the differences in the actual erosion on the material. So this one looks like it's actually finer grained. This one looks like it might be coarser grained. So that might explain the actual differences in the the way it's eroding out. And once again, I see a lot of feldspars and the grey quartz, and obviously the quartz is actually quite smaller. But there's no fresh material that you can see. And this tree would actually be exploiting the fracture in the rock material and forcing it apart, so increasing the actual erosion rate and weathering rate. So, put them both together. So, weathering when the material breaks down, erosion when it's transported away. Okay. Yeah, 1840s human, no, not humans, uh, white Europeans have been here. Before that, it's the Wurundjeri people. So they do have a grave site over that way. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't have that much information. So this is what it was like when it was actually farmland. But slowly, this is actually regenerating. And over there we have horse stables. So basically that's the geology of this area, quite simple. Uh, sometimes you can see fresh material. Yeah, that has a, a lot of feldspars in that. Probably, I'd say probably that's the dominant mineral in this type of rock. It's the feldspars because uh, with, when you get to diorite you get pretty much very little quartz in there so and here we have some uh, acacias so these are quite young only a few years old so where's the parent so that's the actual parent there and there's a uh, I can't remember what that plant is. My wife actually got this when she got her citizenship ceremony. And then she ripped it out and threw it in the rubbish because she thought it was a weed. So she doesn't really know the difference between plants. Dead she oak. So she oak forest. I think it's called a bursia. So she oak forest. All around here. And sometimes Actually, these shirt should start to be spreading like wildfire as well as the eucalyptus. The only thing that's stopping them is the actual rabbits. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. Even though they're tasty, just like kangaroo. You know, I can't leave my wife alone too long because you never know who's here. So anyway, that's the actual granite diorite of... Uh, all the granite diorite. Nothing very interesting, but if you're stopping at a park, just uh, check out the local geology. So, this granite diorite 
goes that way, goes that way, I think it's like uh, five kilometer radius, don't know, I'm just guessing, didn't really look at the map that well, but, you know, here's a fresh piece, and you can see most of the white is the feldspars, and you've got greys, okay, you've got white feldspars, I keep on forgetting to actually zoom in. Then you got the greys, which are a lot less of quartz. Blacks will be amphibole. And the micas, I can't really tell on this. So the micas are probably this dark material here. And the amphibole is probably that. There might be some horn blend as well. Probably some other accessory minerals. Which, so the, it says biotype mica. Could have muscovite mico in here as well, but anyway, that's the strange thing about it, is that you know you look at the actual rock and you think you might know what it is, but then you do a mineralogical analysis and it'll come back as something else. Ah, so that's why I just mainly rely on the geological maps and what they interpret the actual area to be. So like when I went to that waterfall, it was rhyolite or rhyodacite, ignin bright, which it was the later because it was a fresh piece of material that didn't look really rhyolite like. Okay, so this one has dragonflies on. And I do like dragonflies, so this is the larger species. I'm going to look up and see what species that is because I have a dragonfly book at home. Dragonflies just fascinate me. And these are just uh, shielding from the wind. So we have another one up there. Another one up there. So it looks like these, these three specimens are actually the same species. Oh, and there was another one, I think it flew away. My wife must have scared it off. So there's only two now. But they have yellow on the side. So evolution is an amazing thing. So they used to have a large type of dragonflies. Uh, they weren't specifically these dragonflies. They were probably a distant relative. I think they were like, I don't know, a metre across or something like that. Need to look that up. So, where are you going? There you go. Beautiful dragonfly species. So they they would actually breed in the water, but they don't need water to live now. Not like that. Anyway, so the evolution of. Life is pretty fascinating. So it's also interesting to find out what. So all these species are currently changing. So species always change. So we've got a eucalypt. We've got flies all around us, and they're becoming quite annoying. And there's lots of small birds. So as we get more trees, there's going to be more bird life here. Uh, so it'll be interesting. What would that shiok be like in? 10 million years obviously it won't be the same it'll either look the same but have different genetics uh, like cockroaches seem to have as well as the eucalypts these are eucalypts actually recently just started to radiate so it's about 600 species in 10 million years probably a lot of those will be extinct and probably a species like that will have diverged into multiple species. Depends if uh, they get isolated from each other. Uh, but as well as the she oak. So there's two types of she oak. This is the. This one has the large cone. So this is the large cone. And then there is the small cone, which has a cone size of about half. In a class of different species, they probably can hybridise with each other, but probably not. 
really. So when you've got fresh cones, you can just throw them everywhere. Eventually, there will be a she oak forest here. Obviously, it hasn't started growing because probably the kangaroos keep eating the actual young ones. But you can see eucalypts are starting to reproduce. They've been protected uh, by the fallen tree, which is still alive. And so here's the actual older trunk that's died. Another trunk is growing around it. These ones haven't opened yet. Mm. They'll eventually fall off. But also, around some of these trees, you have a bear patch. So as these trees are growing, they're actually sucking up water through the actual trunk. Not only that, you have so the large pooies kangaroo the smaller one is rabbit so you have them shading here and they're also digging it up so both of those species would be and uh, causing it to be bare because over there we don't have a bear patch so obviously that doesn't favorite them but over there it's actually quite large so this rock type is probably probably pretty pretty rich. So, although they use this type of uh, material just for grazing, uh, not for crops, probably because the soil's too shallow. Oh, there we have a lizard. Oh, I've got to make another video for that. Yamusin 是, what we have is a Jackie lizard Amphibolurus. I think that's how you pronounce the genus. There's four species, and this one's the more common one. Uh, these also occur up to Queensland, they don't occur in the Tasmania, a little bit in South Australia. And so, in this parkland, it should be quite common. And they just eat insects, obviously. How far am I away? Probably about 40 centimetres. And it's not scared. So, very interesting. Look at that beautiful patination on the actual. So there's its eyes, two eyes on the side. But I don't really see too many of these in the parklands because they would actually go and hide in the actual grass. This grass is quite small, but you know. They're probably in larger grasses you wouldn't find them. So it's so fascinating how these evolve. So this genus only occurs in Australia. So obviously it's been here for tens of millions of years and just evolving. But this is the most widespread, so I reckon in the future this will probably subdivide into different species. But there's no actual cutoff between the actual uh, populations. So all the way to Queensland, there is no nothing in the way. Although on high mountain peaks they could be cut off by the actual temperature. And probably a rainforest, they could adapt. And dry deserts, they could also adapt to different habitats and lifestyles. Jackie Dragon, if you come to Australia, especially New South Wales and Victoria, just look for them.
shouldn't be too hard to find. So then we have fallen logs like this. So I'm going a bit off topic. So this is home for a well, myriad of insects, and as you can see, a lot of insects like to bore into the actual material. Termites as well on the surface, but in the hollows you can probably also find possums. Although this should have tree hollows, and it should have possums. Also, birds like to nest in there. It's nesting season at the moment, so you should be able to find some. And uh, underneath you'll probably find snakes. Now I'm not too concerned about snakes. Snake species we have around here. Red belly black snake, that's pretty chilled out. Uh, there's the brown snake, which uh, would rip you a new asshole. There is the copperhead, which is not as feisty. Or the lowlands copperhead and the tiger snake which uh, that will rip your face off but you're not really going to see these because it's warmed up so they're actually warm uh, they would be hunting for food but oh this is a native mine I can't remember the species I used to have this in my garden beautiful yellow flowers obviously it's flowered already and it's just uh, seeding Obviously all over the place. Anyway, so you won't see. So there are four species of snake that you'll see around here. And there might be a blind snake as it warms up. The snake species will start migrating down south. Uh, it was we saw the Jackie Dragon. Uh, surprised I haven't seen any blue tongues here. But there should be. So there's the big skink. It should also be the grass skink. Which is actually probably about that big, five to ten centimeters, and that should be quite common. But as the grass is actually quite low, I'm not surprised there's none here. There's nowhere for them to hide apart from the trees. So, and that path is just made out of granodiorite. Basically, this is just uh, woodlands, and you can see the small plants over there. So this 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 is slowly revegetating. Over time, it'll just get a lot better. But if I stop walking on it, it'd be really really great. 